Hey, it's Andrew Huang. If you didn't see my last video, that's where I came up with this, and uh, it's a really fun video, you should check it out. But we ended up with this drop made up of sounds sent in by my Twitter followers. I didn't ask them for anything specific, I believe I just said short sound effects, and I got a ton of stuff, so I'm gonna show you how I arranged them, and all the little fun editing tricks that I did to get them sounding like what you just heard. Let's go. So first things first, it's not all Twitter sounds. I added three of my own. There's this kick drum, and this snare drum and this other snare drum. Everything else you heard though was the Twitter samples. The first editing trick is not really a trick, it's just editing, it's just trimming. Just cut down to just the part of the sound that is anywhere near usable. So some examples of that, keys hitting the table, water bottle hitting someone's face, or uh, a sword being unsheathed. Why not? The next easy way to transform a sound is with pitch shifting. Many programs allow you to do this. If you speed up the playback of a sound, it'll be higher. If you slow down the playback, it'll sound lower. One of those that I want to draw your attention to was this uh, straw blowing video clip. That's a really short sample that I cut down and I pitch shifted it up by 16 semitones, leaving us with this. And so that basically sounds like a hi-hat and that's exactly how I used it in this drop. <laughs> And I guess that's one of the tricks is just thinking about some of the sounds as if they are real instruments and using them in the way that those real instruments have always been used. Because those are ways of playing those sounds that we've already figured out sound good. Next, if you've got sounds that are pitched, then pitch shifting those can result in melodies. So that was a bottle being hit, pitch shifted to a few different notes, and then a slinky hitting the floor that was slowed right down. Here's the original sound. Here it is, it goes down ends up sounding kind of like a bell. Now, another kind of pitch shifting is where the amount of pitch shifting changes over time. So check this one out. Got a sample of this dude saying my name. Andrew Huang. And what I did was just take a tiny piece of that and pitch shift it up, but then draw an automation curve so that the pitch would fall really quickly. So it sounds like a weird little budget laser beam. Here's one where I went the opposite direction with the pitch shift. I took a sound, pitch shifted it down, and then had it zip back up. This was some really um, creative piano playing that I wasn't sure how it was gonna work in. But then I figured uh, I'll just turn it into a weird sound effect rather than trying to get notes or chords out of it. And I really like how it turned out. I could make a whole track just around that. Next technique, EQ. Here's a weird sound someone sent me and I have no idea what it is. So I took a little piece of that that I liked, but because of the quality of the recording, it wasn't really coming through the way that I would like, and so I did some pretty extreme EQing. You can have a look at these curves to make it sound like that. So that's just bringing up a bunch of the treble, completely cutting out the unnecessary bass frequencies, and then it looks like there was also a problematic frequency here that I got rid of. I don't know if you can hear that little hum. Yeah, and I just sliced that right out. The one other sound I did this kind of extreme EQing with was uh, this guy who, I guess he's at a party and it's just the background noise of the conversation. So I like this one part where it sounds like someone saying, yeah, who knows. It's way in the background. I kind of made this work with some really heavy filtering with the EQ. I know it still doesn't sound like much, but in the context of the drop, it's just like a quick little extra yeah that sneaks in for half a second. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is layering. There was this great clip of crunchy leaves being walked on. So I just chopped out a couple little chunks from that, and they kind of sound like hand claps on their own. And I just accentuated that by layering up four of those different little pieces. Now here's the real fun stuff. This is how I changed a bunch of different noises into those bass sounds and those kind of dubstepy growls. Here's someone playing some good old fashioned mouth trumpet. I took this little piece and I just pitch shifted it down 29 semitones. That literally sounds like a bass guitar, just like that. This next one is a jaw harp that I tuned down just four semitones. 
Something I'll note though is on this one, I'm using Ableton's warp feature, which allows you to pitch shift stuff without changing how long it is. So if you slow something down, typically it gets longer. What this feature allows you to do is completely independently adjust the length of clips versus the pitch of clips. And the interesting thing with it is that it gets different artifacts and different tonalities depending on the mode you use and the settings you use. So for example, with this jaw harp, I have the formant set at zero. If I turn that all the way to maximum, you can hear that it's got a different tone to it. So there are various settings you can play with there, but that's an Ableton only thing. So I'm not gonna go too far into it, but super fun. Here's a great one where I use that same technique. This is a squeaky music stand. And as we pitch shift it down, you're gonna hear it transform. That's pretty cool. All right, the next trick is an EQ with automation. So I took this electric toothbrush sound and I pitch shifted that way down. Kind of like a bass sound already, but I wanted to do something to bring it even closer to an EDM sort of bass sound. And what I ended up doing is this extreme EQ and I just automated it to move like that. It goes up really quick at the start of the sound and then down slower, but still pretty quickly. And so that's accentuating this smaller band of frequencies and sweeping through them really fast to give this cool effect. I also did this same thing with the guy saying Andrew Huang. Let's hear the original. So that's just a really low pitch shifted voice. Here it is with the EQ sweep. And as you can see, this was a way bigger EQ sweep. Like this thing is off the charts here. This sound wasn't quite as good to begin with though. So I put it through a bass distortion and that just makes it gnarly and awesome. And then our growliest growl sound was this awesome human. Yeah! So I put some distortion on him as well. Pitch shifted him down 17 semitones with warping on. So the timing would stay the same. <laughs> And then I just cut that into two pieces. So with a beat behind it, it sounds like a pretty good little dubstep moment. <laughs> Next up were these two rhythmic sounds. I pitch shifted them down. I adjusted their timing to perfectly match up with the tempo of our song. And then I used Ableton's auto pan effect, though instead of using it for panning, I used it to control volume. And you can see the uh, shape of the envelope here. We've got a uh, regular rhythm of volume going from high to low and then immediately high again, decaying to low. <coughs> so let me play that for you without the uh, volume effect. <coughs> It still sounds cool, but I just wanted that extra punchiness. It just gives the sound more of an attack and I found that that sit better in the track. Here's a sound that I ended up adding a snare to, but it's pretty cool on its own. It's actually two sounds. It is whatever this piece of equipment is, combined with this person exhaling. So together they reminded me of that thing that's from like house music, I guess, the Preta snare, I think it's called. And that's exactly how I used it. On the last beat of this drop pattern, it just punches through everything. And that is one that I accentuated with another real snare drum. Let's put that snare drum on it and see what it sounds like. Yeah, you know. And lastly, probably my favorite sound, I took this little mouth pop and I did this playful little thing with it where I just put eight of them in a row and pitch shifted them low to high. So it starts at 22 semitones down and it ends at three semitones down. And one little detail I'll point out about this is that I didn't just add the same number of semitones each time. I gave it a very rough sort of uh, exponential shape. So the amount of pitch shifting grows greater over time. Let me show you what I mean. We start at negative 22, the next one is negative 21. The next one is negative 19, negative 17, 14, 10, six, and three. So we start just going one semitone at a time, then two semitones, then three. Oh yeah, and in a couple times I did four, but then I went back to three. So it's not perfect, but sounds cute. So that was the deal with the editing, and I did that all at once without knowing exactly how I was gonna use the sounds. I just took each one and tried to make it as musical and fun sounding as possible. And then when it came to composing the drop, it was really about just putting those in different orders and in different rhythms and seeing what I liked. One or two of them as I was composing, I would edit further just to get them to fit in a certain way. But most of them, it was just like working with a whole bunch of prepared samples, which, I guess is exactly what it was. So check out my last video if you want more of the story of how this piece of music came to be. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in a few days with some more good content.